Hello my lovely humans. Are we ready to make a little mini me Coraline doll? Coraline is one of my favorite movies. I know it's a kid's movie, but it is just the best. And I think that the little doll that the Beldum makes in the very beginning is super cute and I've loved seeing a lot of people make their own little mini me versions. So I thought that I would close out this spooky season with a really fun and lighthearted little DIY. So starting off this project, I'm taking a ball of aluminum foil, shaping it into a head, and using a, the back end of an X-Acto knife to make some cavities for the eyes. I'm again going to be using some polymer clay. You want to knead this before you start using so it is pliable and easy to maneuver around your skull. Because I do not have the proper tools for sculpting quite yet, I use just whatever I have around the house. And I used a candle in order to roll it, but if you have a rolling pin or one of those nice little clear rollers for polymer clay, it's probably better. Now when you are putting the clay over your aluminum ball, because aluminum does have quite a bit of texture, you want to make sure that it is thick enough that it's not going to look all crazy lumpy, and that you'd be able to smooth it out without breaking the polymer clay and running into the aluminum underneath. You don't want it to be too thick either so that you have to bake it for an eternity. I am also making sure that the eyes fit and look good and I'm checking periodically to make sure that the nose, the mouth, everything works really well with the size of the buttons that I'm using. For the nose, I'm taking a little bit of extra clay and adding it to the face. With this, you don't want to be too precious about making sure that things look really good before you get it on the face because you have to kind of smooth it down and make sure that everything is adhered to each other. So just put a blob on and then you can take your time to shape afterwards. And the same thing goes with the lips. One of my favorite tools actually with polymer clay is a nail tool that I got from a little kit forever ago, but it's these tiny little balls and it's really nice for smoothing things. And then I use it for puncturing and all sorts of things later. Now one of the biggest things with the Coraline doll is the stitched mouth, which the end doll, you don't really see it, but when the Beldum is making it at the very beginning of the movie, you see that the mouth is the way that she fills up the little doll with sand. So I used the back of an X-Acto knife that's not sharp just to make a little bit of an indent, and then used a needle and then my little nail tool to kind of accentuate the little stitch marks. Moving on to the ears, I'm making a circle out of the polymer clay and cutting it as precise as possible in half. That way I can make sure that there's not a thicker ear or a bigger ear. And you very easily just roll up the little half moon and then you can stick it onto your head. Now we're gonna move on to constructing our wire body. I love that it has a wire body because that way you can position your doll and make them sit, make them stand up, do all these sorts of fun things with their arms and legs. I'm using, I believe it was 16 gauge wire. You can buy it pretty cheap at a craft store. And I am twisting the arms and the legs, making some hips so that I have something to build the rest of my body on. I'm starting off by doing all the polymer clay sections first because I want to bake this. So the next thing I'm going to do are these little hands. For the hands, I kind of did the same method as the ears where I take a piece of clay and I try to cut it in half that way I can make sure that things are sort of the same size. I'm sculpting it by making sure that part of the wrist section is more cylindrical and then flattening out the rest and using an X-Acto knife to perfect the fingers. I'm also trying to measure things out, not because I'm trying to be too precise with everything being perfect, but I don't want to have one arm being gargantuanly longer than the other. The last thing I need to do out of clay is to make my shoes. I was pondering for a long time what the shoes are going to be, and I decided to make these cute, witchy platform heels. For the arms and the feet, I am just making these holes so that it is really easy for me to attach the shoes later, and that's how I attached the arms to the wireframe. frame. 
Our next step is to cover our body in some sort of material that is soft and plushy. I am using yarn for that and wrapping it around. Before I get too much further though, I'm gonna take a little bit of scrap fabric and rolling it around the torso just so that I don't have to be winding more yarn than I have to. Once I finish the body, we're gonna move on to painting. So I've seen these like fun little TikToks or videos where people are trying to make their own foundation out of primary colors. So that's essentially what I was doing here with paint. I started off by mixing an equal amount of red, yellow, and blue, and just tweaking it based off of what I saw with my skin tone and adding a little bit of white as needed. So with my paint, I am just making sure I cover all of her head, her hands. Most likely probably gonna need a couple coats. I know that there are some flesh colored polymer clays that you can buy. I Mine is translucent, I just was using one I had and I had to do a couple coats. If you don't like the skin color, if you're using acrylics like me, it's really easy to just paint over it. I tried to replicate one of my favorite lip colors and then using a dried brush and barely any pigment, I'm doing a very, very light blush. I don't really use blush, so I just wanted to add a little bit more dimension so I don't look dead in dull form. After I have put on my eyebrows, I am going to paint the back of my head black because we're gonna get onto hair and I don't wanna have any weird fleshiness showing if my hair is not perfect on my doll. For this, I'm basically creating little wefts of hair by tying different strands to a longer thread. And I am gonna be layering kind of like when you put on extensions, it's almost the exact same process. For the very top, I did two smaller wefts for kind of a middle part, and then I added one longer strip and moved back some of the hair so I could get underneath and have it look a little bit more natural so I can create my bangs. And next, I just have to give my little doll a haircut. Next, I didn't make the stitches out of clay, I forgot to, so I decided I was just gonna use some wire and then paint them. So I'm just gonna create this shape. I measure each one and make sure that it fits into the hole before gluing it, and I use some super glue to do that, and also use super glue for the eyes. I also found that using thinner yarn instead of thread helped to make that more dramatic X shape of the yarn with the button eyes. Using a little bit of acrylic paint and a really, really fine brush, I'm just going over these little stitches to make it look more like thread using a brown color. Now I'm making my itty bitty little earrings, and I almost was not going to do this, but I was trying to push myself to make it as realistic as possible, and I managed to put all nine of my piercings, albeit in the wrong ears, on my little doll. And now we're gonna give her a nice little outfit. I was very troubled as to what to put on her, but I chose to find something that I wear pretty regularly, nothing too fancy, just regular me, chilling at home kind of outfit, and I replicated two of my favorite items of clothing. I used to stretch fabric for the top. I did a little bit of measurements in the mock-up first to make sure that everything was gonna fit well. It was pretty challenging to try to draw out something so small with chalk on black stretch fabric, but I managed. Probably the hardest part was trying to fit the sleeve and sew it on, especially because on the other side, since this is sewed on to the doll and sewing it closed, there's not an opening for me to take off the shirt. I had to sew the second sleeve on when the rest of the fabric was ready on the doll, if that makes sense. It was a fun time. And next I'm gonna do a bias cut little skirt. And for this, because it's a lot simpler, it's a lot bigger, I get to use my sewing machine. And I think my sewing machine looks very similar to the Beldum, so I thought that was very perfect. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this really fun and simple little last Halloween hurrah DIY. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.